All right, so let's talk about the interface now. We have three main parts of, um, of our interface. And um, up here, there are kind of some settings, menus, uh, and um, the navigation system or navigation bar. Then we have a our main network system, or so-called pane, uh, P-A-N-E. <laughs> and um, we also have like a timeline and some timeline settings down here. All right, so we also have this palette, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, we have four menus here. Um, about the file menu and the dialog, uh, the the preferences and um, also the hel help. I'm gonna make other videos about. So um, yeah, but yeah, these are pretty straightforward. And we have free links uh, to the wiki, forum, and tutorials page of the Derivative CA website. We have a kind of on and off bu button or cooking on off button. And this just means when we turn this off, er nothing is processed in our project. So um, yeah, quite straightforward as well. Um, also, we have this F FPS here. So this is just telling uh, us and what kind of frame rate uh, our project is currently running. So you can set that here, um, but um, yeah, I recommend, I usually just use 60 FPS. And um, this should also be running at at least 50. Um, you also have this real-time checkbox, um, which should usually just be turned on, but um, if you, yeah, th there's gonna be times um, when we when we wanna turn this off. And then um, we have this little box here that just um, tells us what we last did. So if I delete this and uh, undo that, so you can see um, my actions there. Um, then we have this little button here, and we hover over it, uh, like over any kind of um, button here, except for these. Um, we uh, we we get like the name of what it is. Well, what it is. Um, when I click on this, or I can also press F1. So if I do that, the um, project kind of runs. So the the um, the network it completely closes, and you only you're only running the uh, the output. So don't close it here because you're gonna close to the entire program. So just uh, press Escape to to go back. Um, we're gonna talk about that later as well. So then, if we click on this weird uh, little symbol here, um, the palette opens, and the palette is just a list or like a folder system of um, pre-made um, components so re reusable like tools and, and stuff like that so we can uh, just um, t gra uh, drag and drop anything of that in here and also then have a look at uh, how, how that's done um, so you have like a lot of pre-made image filters and stuff like that already in here and um, <coughs> also there's this my components um, section here so you can add your own components you can make um, kind of like a folder um, or like a group of uh, operators and then you can put them here for later use all right so then how we have this section here called pane layout and these weird rectangles here so what this means this whole area with the network inside and this net, uh, navigation bar up here it's called a pane and we can make several of this or split these into several so I can for example click on this um, and then it's split into left and right I can also achieve this by clicking on this drop down arrow here and and saying split left right or top button and here I can do the same again and then say split uh, top bottom and now I can uh, now I have several options what, what I can do with this um, so for once you you can um, be at s several parts of or like several um, positions in your network so I can go in here I can be here and um, work on several parts or like it's, yeah several positions um, that is that is one use for this um, the other one is that you can actually change um, what you're seeing here so you, it doesn't have to be the network you can also just click on here and then you can look at something like the um, the panel 
which doesn't show anything right now, um, or the geometry viewer, so you can see your uh, 3D geometry in the world space and um, look at, like, uh, yeah, there's a few options that we might talk about at some point. Um, and there's an animation editor uh, that you can also have um, th that you might want to work with if you're like uh, working with keyframe animation. And um, so you could have something like the geometry viewer up here and then something like uh, the text port down here, which is just um, can kind of giving you the output of if you're like working with Python, um, like so this is just for Python. Uh, if you're writing a script, then the arrows and like prints are gonna uh, be showing up here. We can click on this arrow and then on close again to close this. Oops, because uh, we're not gonna need it right now. I'm now gonna talk a bit about the navigation system. Um, these um, darker, bigger ones are components um, and you can zoom into them. And when you start a new project, um, so before I do that, you can um, use your left mouse to drag and drop around, and you can use your mouse wheel to go in and out of these containers. So um, there's always at the beginning, there's this project one main container at the root. So we're right now we're at the so-called root or uh, at home. <laughs> so I can't like zoom out any further here. Um, you can also always get here, if I'm in here, you can always click on the home to uh, get back here. Um, we, we're not, we don't need to talk about these for now. Um, if I, like, you can see this is called project one. If I now dive into here, you can um, now see we're now inside project one. And this is called geo one. If I dive in here, we are now in geo one. And now I can like click on that to go back, for example. Um, you can also navigate through these by uh, using U and I. So if I press U, you go one, one layer up. And if I press I, you go into the selected container. And um, also there is uh, this, uh, which looks uh, this, this square. If you click on that, um, the current um, layer that you're in uh, is going to be output here. And um, <coughs> so this is different to the perform mode because in the perform mode everything else get gets closed and here you have still like you still have your network to work in but you can also see several of these uh, if you wanted to so you have like a window here um and then we also like one one last thing for the navigation you also have this bookmark um uh little bookmark uh symbol here um so you can bookmark this page, and if I'm like deep inside uh, several layers, I can just easily go in there and then select that. All right, <coughs> so um, I'm gonna dive deeper into the whole operator system, but just very briefly. Um, as I said, you can like drag and drop around with the left mouse, zoom in with the uh, zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. You can um, also right-click anywhere to get the general um, right-click menu. And also you can right-click on any uh, operator. And um, if you have a, an operator selected, you can see up here, there is this uh, menu, this parameter kind of section. And that changes according to whatever operator you have selected. So um, on, this, uh, on this section here, you have like the, the type, the name, the name is also here. Uh, always there's uh, a few um, tabs and there's always like a common page. And um, you also have the option to turn on this. So if you have that turned on, only the parameters that you've changed, so if I change this, uh, only the changed ones are gonna uh, appear here. And then you also have like this uh, help um, and the Python help. So if you click on this, you're going to be directed to the wiki of this specific operator. And the same with the Python. All right, then we have this timeline section um, down here. I'm not going to talk about, uh, about that too much because it gets a bit complicated or confusing in the beginning. And it still is to me sometimes. Um, so just generally speaking, for every comp, or for every layer technically that you have, you can technically have a different timeline. 
for a specific timeline. Um, usually when you start it, it's always set to like 600. Um, the start and end just says says whatever frame like f it starts at and whatever frame it ends at. So now it's going from 1 to 600, so and that at 60 FPS, so it's like 10 seconds long, as you can see here. Um, and you can also just uh, like you can just go through that by here, but um, and right now we're not really using the timeline, um, but the time is just like constantly going there in the background. Um, we can change the length of this if we wanted to. Um, now it's longer. The hour start and hour end just uh, is, is referring to this blue section. So this blue one, you can. This is kind of the the range that you're working in, but we don't need to like understand that right now. Um, it's not it's not relevant in the beginning, and we also have like tempo reset f. T sick and we also have this beats uh, thing here, and they're they're all like there's constantly a beat running in the background, but um I also don't think it's very um, necessary to talk about that right now. So here you have you have the time in hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, and here you have the current frame you're in. You can also by like you have some controls over that here. So if I press space, we're pausing this exactly at thousand amazing um, and um, so sometimes like this pauses everything that's going on uh, in here so the animation isn't moving anymore um, so uh, sometimes in, in the beginning there might be a problem and the problem might be that you have paused so just press space or play here to um, pause and play um, you can also go back in time, though I never used that. You can also, like, by clicking plus and minus, you go, you can go through every frame by frame. And um, you also have this range limit here. So usually this is just looping through. When it gets there, it starts again. I can just click on once, um, and then it's going to stop at the end. But, like, the timeline is really, like, I'm mostly just using the play and pause, but um, it's relevant for when you do keyframe animation or when you do things like exporting. So if you want to export a loop, then you're going to need uh, the timeline. Um, and uh, when you, uh, for example, work with a an audio track, um, so for a mu music video or something, that you're gonna, then you're going to need the exact length uh, of your project. Um, yeah, I hope that's uh, that's all for now. I hope I went over everything that's important in the beginning. And we're now gonna um, dive deeper into operators.